Good morning. Welcome to Live from Glenner U Product Forum. Today we'll hear from Matthias Nakatsumi on next generation power and data hubs for Soldier C4ISR networks. Please use the ask a question function on your GoToWebinar dashboard to ask questions at any time during the presentation. And now here's Matthias. Morning everyone. My name is Matthias Nakatsumi. As Tony mentioned, uh, we have people standing by for any questions you might have, so feel free to ask questions at any, any time using the Q&A function. In this sem seminar, we will look at some of the major developments in connectivity and networking for solar systems. We will examine the role played by power and data hubs as an integration platform for radios and other C4 ISR devices. Soldier personal area networks are increasingly complex given the wide range of mission profiles. Next generation scalable technologies are required to meet these ever evolving requirements. The dismounted soldier is a critical element on the battlefield. These highly trained and specialized operators are able to act as a force multipliers when operating in concert with other assets in the field, such as UAVs and other aircraft. The viability of new technology has increased the soldier's capability and lethality at the tactical edge while also increasing his mental and physical burdens. In order to reduce operator burden, current and next generation soldier systems are looking at the dismounted soldier as an integrated combat platform. The aim of these programs is to create a platform or underlying network for continual integration of compatible C4 ISR technology into the soldier's arsenal. These are just a few of the many programs globally which are looking at integrated power and data platforms built around the dismounted soldier. Typically, the squad is viewed as the basic unit receiving the most focus with electronic equipment selections expressly designed to improve squad protection and lethality, mobility, as well as general command and control capabilities. Soldier power and data hubs, for example, Glenair Starpan, are purpose designed to enable digital hardware to work together seamlessly in terms of power sharing, power management, as well as data distribution. This illustration places Starpan in the center of the personal area network that includes radio communications, targeting, video downlink, GPS, primary and secondary battery power, and of course, the soldier's computing device or end user device. The hub in this context can be more correctly described as an integration platform with four key elements. First, the hubs themselves. Secondly, auxiliary devices. Thirdly, the interconnect, and finally, the software applications that enable the dismounter soldier to optimize power and data sharing via the system. The Glenair Starpan system of hubs, cables, adapters, and accessories integrate seamlessly into the plate carrier and soldier molly configurations that have been fully vetted and proven by frontline combat forces. In this regard, the architecture of a Starpan system aligns perfectly with the integrated soldier system platform being adopted by the U.S. and our NATO partners, including the use of standard interconnect interface between all devices. Radio communications are at the heart of the integrated soldier, as these devices are used as a principal means that soldiers can use to call, to coordinate aerial support, communicate with command headquarters, and share situational awareness information with others in their unit. To that end, let's review current radio technology as a foundation for discussing factors driving next generation radio data links. Many of the currently fielded tactical data link radio sets are highly capable software-defined radio systems. These systems include radios built by L3 Harris and Talus. Evolutions in this technology include enabling legacy radio systems to carry small amounts of digital data. This enables data integration utilizing existing deployed radio systems removing the barrier of needing to procure and field entirely new radio system. The side hat adapter shown here is just one of the many that have been developed for the Starpan system to integrate legacy radios into the system. Again, it is correct to state that radio communication in the field is the most important element in the dismounted soldier's kit, but the need to provide reliable voice and digital communications extends into the commercial applications, for example, fire, police, rescue, and border patrol communities who need improved tools to enable mission-critical data communication over commercial radio system networks and available frequency bands. Common commercial radio systems include units produced by Motorola and Gotenna, which are designed to provide data communications when cell towers are not operational. 
Next generation radio systems are providing the dismounted soldier with access to even more data. These new classes of radios in fact, are in fact major innovations providing higher data rates, more reliable coverage, and longer distance networking. Notable in this field are such next generation technologies such as mesh networking radios, SATCOM on the move, and of course HF radio systems. Here's a little more information on SATCOM technology. These new satellite constellations, small form factor terminals, provide the ability for, dismounted for the dismounted soldier to reliably access data from anywhere in the field. Immersat VGAN is a leading mobile satellite communication service providing global broadband data and voice platform in a compact, lightweight, portable terminal. Biosat SATCOM control stations comply with integrated waveform baseline for UHF satellite communications, providing upgraded communications interoperability, scalability, and flexibility across both legacy and next generation platforms. While most traditional radio systems rely on line of sight and ground wave signal propagation, HF radio systems can transmit data over the horizon utilizing the Earth's ionosphere. These systems have been around for a long time but are now experiencing a resurgence due to the need to enable over the horizon communications in radio denied environments. The ground soldier today has an unprecedented amount of information gathering capability enabled by new ISR technologies. From small drones to next generation sensor systems and targeting technologies, the ability of a single dismounted soldier to gather critical information has never been greater. Let's take a look at some of the diverse ISR technologies now in common use by the modern warfighter. The L3 TAC rover system on the left is in every respect the industry standard. The combined role of the TAC rover is the downlinking of video images from tactical UAVs and other aircraft and for distribution and analysis by JTACs, mission commanders and other command and control forces on the ground. The TAC rover and other downlink receivers shown here are ideally equipped with a standard connector interface for hookup within the system. We've mentioned this point before in the, Glenner, in the systems Glenner is responsible for producing and fielding this common connector interface is the Mighty Mouse Quick Disconnect Series 807. In the targeting area, military and tactical forces can choose from a large variety of laser range finders from a wide assortment of manufacturers. Here are three such devices in active deployment and use. The Mosquito made by Safran, a lightweight range finder made by Northrop Grumman, and a common laser range finder made by Elbit. Defense Advanced GPS Receivers, or DAGGER, is a handheld GPS receiver used by the U.S. military services and some of its NATO partners. It is a military-grade dual-frequency receiver that has the security and hardware necessary to decode encrypted PY code GPS signals. The unit manufactured by Rockwell Clones enjoys a prominent market position. The RSR, Remote Secure Receiver, on the right is also from Rockwell Clones and is a small phone form factor next generation GPS device. Let's turn now to a discussion of the heart of all C4 ISR systems, today's small form factor computers known as EUDs. With their ability to run complex soldier software, as well as function as a video monitoring platform for more general use, a common EUD is the Samsung Tactical Edition Android phone. These already ruggedized devices can be further protected through the use of various protective cases useful for integration and attachment to the soldier kit. There are a number of EUDs in active use today. Selection is commonly based on any number of criteria, including software support, regional preferences, and locally sourced technology. Com most platforms utilize the Android operating system, although Windows is also a common solution. Starpan integrates seamlessly with the popular end-user computing platforms, Android or Windows. The Starpan power management applications, SPAR for Android and WASP for Windows, also integrate seamlessly with ATAC, the leading uh, digitally aided close air support software application used by the JTAC community. Also, in terms of our architecture, we offer microprocessor controlled power management a common battlefield management software available for soldiers today is ATAC, the Android Team Awareness Kit. A commercial version of ATAC is also available on the Google Play Store designed for use by firefighters, police, and others. The Android Team Awareness Kit provides the user with the ability to pass location, mapping, and point of interest information through a common interface 
ATAC is also compatible with power management software, such as the SPAR app used by Starfield. The end user device, or EUD, is indeed the heart of a soldier's personal area network and may be configured for each and every mission, depending on the exact hardware that is to be carried by each soldier. Much like adding drivers to a desktop computer, it is necessary to step in configuring device recognition uh, and in a LAN environment. The soldier's EUD must be routinely configured to recognize new devices in their environment. The StarPan Mission Manager is a Linux OS ARM-based embedded computing device that acts as a full-time host, brokering data between the soldier's USB peripherals and the end user device. The StarPan Mission Manager makes connecting multiple new devices to any UED before or during a mission easier than ever before. Key attributes of the Mission Manager include minimal power demands, seamless integration into the StarPan system, NATO standard Mighty Mouse Connector interface, and support for multiple simultaneous Ethernet devices. The Mission Manager is a sophisticated next generation technology in a soldier systems and we could really spend an entire hour here today just discussing the specialized auxiliary device. Please don't hesitate to ask any questions uh, at the end of this talk or view our website for more information. Pictured below is the mission manager. Uh, here's how it looks. Uh, you can see it's a very small form factor device. It has two connector interfaces, one for the end user device and one to connect to the StarPan hub system. Uh, this device is also available with integrated MOLLE mounting systems. All of the C4 ISR capability comes at a cost. Most of the systems we've discussed require additional battery power capacity to be carried by the soldier. It is, management, it is the management and efficient sharing of battery and auxiliary power between devices on the integrated platform that is a principal role of the Power Data Hub. Before we look at the data management capabilities of the hub in more detail, Let's survey briefly the range, available range of dismounted soldier system batteries. A wide range of conformal and case battery makers, including Ultralife, Revision, Inventus, and Brentronics, and others, produce unique form factor batteries for use in soldier systems. As with other devices we've discussed, these battery systems must easily and conveniently interconnect with, to the soldier's personal area network. And again, it is a NATO standard Mighty Mouse 807 that provides such a plug-and-play integration. We talk about StarPan being a scalable solution for the dismounted soldier, special forces, as well as mission commanders, JTACs, and other ground forces. This is an important point in the context of battery power and power management, as different mission profiles require different equipment packages and far different capacity requirements for battery power. The range of StarPan sh hubs shown here is really the minimal requirement for scalable hubs meeting the true needs of the modern warfighter in such a complex roles as digitally aided close air support. You can see pictured here our StarPan 6 hub with both radio and PAN ports as well as an end user device port that's available. Uh, we have dual battery interfaces as well as one interface labeled auxiliary for battery charging. This hub is our premier offering. It offers the most connectivity uh, compared to any of the other hubs, uh, which are tuned for smaller uh, soldier systems for lighter mission profiles. You'll notice we refer to power and data hubs as an integration, integration system. The StarPan is no exception in this regard as the technology is not simply USB or power hub platform, but a complete family of interconnect cables, adapters, auxiliary devices, software, and more. This slide illustrates the broad range of cable types that are integral to the business of supplying power and data networking to soldier systems. From left to right on the top row are the system cables used in interconnect end user devices, power cables for battery hookup, and peripheral cables for ISR devices, radio cables for communication technology, Many of these hardware devices require the use of adapters for convenient integration into the soldier platform. Data distribution in soldier networks is facilitated by the hub, and most U.S. military and NATO forces require that platforms be non-proprietary, USB compatible, and incorporate a native 5-volt power bus. When it comes to data distribution, Glenar StarPak technology does not use any proprietary chip hardware. 
Our port multiplier architecture enables an upstream port, multiple downstream ports, the upstream port connecting to the host, and a downstream port connecting to the peripherals. The hubs delivers data at about 60 megabits per second, or one minute of HD video per second. Current open system Starfan platform support USB 2.0. Future releases will support USB 3.2. Our open system of our open system model continues with the use of standard SM bus battery protocol. SM bus enables the use of smart batteries as well as existing range of null standard batteries. The Starpan power distribution and charging architecture is really the most important capability of the system. Let's go ahead and take a look at that topic now. The Starpan's primary power distribution function is illustrated here. We see that primary power distribution supports dual hot swappable battery inputs routed to all pan, end user device, and radio ports. The USB distribution layer supports the regulation of input battery power for distribution to USB 2.0 based devices. Radio holdup power is provided as an input functionality from compatible radio, radio systems. This allows the hub to continue to operate even if main battery power is depleted. However, the hub will not be able to distribute main battery power as that power layer has been depleted. A bi-directional radio to Starpan power sharing on Starpans 2, 4, and 6 are enabled with auxiliary radio power booster and side head adapters, enabling two-way power sharing and charging between the radio and the Starpan hub. As illustrated here, our radio power adapter allows us to both charge the radio battery and power the radio when enough power is available. Finally, on the Starpan 6, the battery charging function with auxiliary power input is performed via the auxiliary power port. This port allows for voltage regulated battery charging to smart battery systems, which allow for the hubs to provide additional mission critical capability to the user. Next generation versions of our hubs will provide a universal power port for both main and auxiliary power management. We've touched on this point a couple of times during the presentation, but it bears emphasis. These systems really depend on the standardization of the connector interface. There are simply too many variables in the power and data connector pinouts, grounding and USB standards to accommodate untested and unproven interconnects. The Glenair Mighty Mouse Starpan system relies exclusively on the use of our own Mighty Mouse 807 Quick Disconnect Interconnect, which has become the de facto standard in the US and NATO systems. All device types shown here incorporate the same tactical connector solution. So that's it. We took a look at the function of power and data hubs as an integration platform in C4 ISR soldier systems. We've discussed the principal device types, including radios and user devices, video downlinks, and so on. When we've given you a fairly general but somewhat detailed explanation of our own Starpan power and data hub solution, including the unique non-proprietary USB data architecture and power distribution system. This slide shows the remaining solution seminars in this series, which we hope you can attend. Thank you.